Hello everyone, today I'm going to be trying to replicate a HOA Type 89 magazine. The Type 89 uses 556, just standard Stanag magazines. Uh, however, the special difference about theirs is that they have holes drilled into the side, actually on the left side. Um, wait, I was on the left side, yeah. They have dr holes drilled here uh, to mark how many rounds you have loaded. So they have a hole drilled at 5 rounds, 10 rounds, 15 rounds, 20 rounds, and uh, I think 25 rounds as well. So. I'm going to be trying to take a regular Stanag and kind of try to replicate that as best as possible because I don't have the technical data sheet on it. It won't be exact. But I think it looks pretty cool. I've been kind of into the HOA Type 89 lately for one reason or another. So that's what I'm going to do today. And if worst comes to worst, it's just a Stanag. Like, they're super replaceable. They're super cheap. Uh, but I don't think it'll be too hard. So... Um, this is a project, I'm, I'm literally just doing this because I think it'll be fun. Uh, and also, lately I've noticed pretty much, not even pretty much, every single gun video that I have on my channel has been a product review. And I don't really want it to be like that, like, I'm not gonna stop doing product reviews on things that I get, because I think they're pretty interesting and helpful to other people who are deciding to buy stuff, but uh, I don't want my entire channel to just be like, gun accessory review channel, so, um... This is something I do like doing quite a bit, is uh, modifying stuff. Um, so, yeah, makes for a nice video, hopefully. I haven't been buying many, like, new products to review lately anyway, so I was thinking, like, well, I don't really have much to record. But this will actually make for a good video, and I'm not saying that just because I don't have anything else to record. <laughs> so, let's actually get started here. I'm going to need to disassemble this magazine, but before I did, I wanted to mention that... Uh, putting holes in the side of the magazine isn't the most practical. It's going to let in a lot of dirt and mud and just any other debris. Um, but it will help you to see how many rounds you have. However, what I wanted to mention, if someone's watching this and actually is like, okay, I'm going to drill holes in the side of a magazine, or I'm going to buy specifically a, a stand egg and then drill holes in it because then I can see my round count. I would really recommend doing, uh, I would recommend against doing that. Um, instead, I would recommend getting a um, new Magpul Gen 3 uh, because these come with a window on the side so you can see your round count. Very, very useful. Uh, and it would be a lot less work and it'll probably work a lot better than trying to do it yourself with a Stanag. As I said, this is just more of a fun project anyway and that's why I'm doing it this way. So, I'm, uh, not actually going to show the disassembly because I'm using a different mag for disassembly and I've already disassembled it and it is a nightmare. I cannot stress enough. I really, really had significant trouble with this like nothing before. Um, base plate uh, is it pretty hard to take off. Um, the follower is the hardest part to take out, but Overall, I would just not recommend it. I have never had as much trouble disassembling any other magazine as I have with Stanags. So, I'm not going to show it. Uh, if you really want to know how to do it, just look up another video. There's tons of actually really good videos on how to do it on YouTube. I'm absolutely not going to cover that here, because I struggled with it for probably 30 minutes. So now actually starting on drilling the holes in here, the very, very first thing I got to do extremely important is to take the measurements and I already did all of this off camera actually last night because I was thinking of uh, doing this project before I actually thought I should make a video out of it so what I did is I traced the magazine onto a piece of graph paper just to kind of have like a thing to work around and I then loaded up a Lancer magazine with 30 rounds and I specifically used a Lancer magazine because it is translucent, and what I did is I, I used this Lancer magazine to uh, estimate where these holes should be drilled. So if you look here, so as I said, I traced out a Stanag, I cut this out of the graph paper, and then I kind of just laid it on top of this Lancer here, and I just looked, like, where is five rounds? Oops, I kind of bumped this. Uh, so I looked, where is five rounds? And it's, like, right there, so then I marked it. Did the same for 10, 15, 20, and 25. And then I um, went back to the Stanag and I marked the ribs because I wanted to have these holes drilled evenly between these ribs. That way it looks nice and uh, even. So I did that and then I drew out these lines 
all the way over here and then I got these all marked to the center and then I just punched out the middle of them and uh, now I can use these holes on uh, or to I can use these holes to mark where they should sit on the magazine by just laying this over it. Now on to the actual drilling. As you already saw on that image I had up on the screen, I've already marked the hole locations where I need to drill. So since I got those, the first thing I did was I punched holes in order to guide the drill bit. That way it wouldn't wander around and be inaccurate and drill in where I didn't want it to be. Uh, and then I actually drilled the holes. As you can see here, I'm using a 7 seconds inch bit. When I was drilling these holes, I underestimated how thick the aluminum was and I actually had to end up doing a second pass. All is well, however, but for some reason I was just surprised by how thick the aluminum was on this magazine. Now to finish up, I'm going to move over to steel wool to make sure there's no burrs left on the magazine from this drilling process. So I'm just really kind of quickly going over all of these holes and just rubbing the steel wool around on it just to make sure there's no burrs, as I mentioned. Uh, and I also did this on the inside, although I'm not showing it here because I had to get at a really awkward angle and I couldn't record it. Pretty much I just attached the steel wool to, or not, not really attached, but I pushed around the steel wool using a stick, that way I could reach it inside of the magazine, and uh, paid particularly close attention to the inside of the holes, since that's more important. If there's any burrs in there, it could actually interfere with the follower. Um, I actually didn't see any, but I just went through, just in case there was any really small ones that I wasn't able to visually notice. And also, I didn't visually notice any warp. Uh, the reason you may have seen, I was using like popsicle sticks and had like a block of wood inside the magazine was to give it some rigidity. That way when I'm drilling into it, it wouldn't bow and permanently bow in to where the follower again would not fit into the magazine and it would fail to feed. But it looks like we're all good here, though I will test later in the video to make sure that it chambers into a AR-15. The last thing I wanted to do was to redo the finish on the inside of these holes here since I did drill through them of course there's no finish in there so it's just exposed aluminum which isn't the worst because aluminum can't rust but it doesn't look good it's just a bright shiny metal so I went over it with a black sharpie and I specifically used a sharpie and not paint because I was worried that if I used paint it would be too thick and if it got on the inside of the magazine it would be really difficult to wash out and it could once it sets again I keep talking about the follower but it could interfere with the follower of the magazine again so I was just being really careful and I decided I'll just use a sharpie because then it's so thin there's no way it could possibly interfere with the follower And as you can see, it fits into this AR-15 lower here with no problems whatsoever. Okay, so I have just gotten this magazine reassembled and I have loaded it fully with 30 rounds. I just checked it in an AR and uh, everything works. One issue I've already noticed is that my holes are a little bit off, so I noticed when I was loading this that this top hole, this should be five rounds. This is, I'm able to see this round when it's at four. Similarly, this is nine, and uh, so pretty much these are all one less than they should be, so 14, yeah, so on. Um, the problem there, I think, is because I was using that Lancer, which of course is slightly different than the Stanag in measurements, and it was probably just that little bit off, and uh, led it to being just like one round off. It's not the end of the world. I noticed I can kind of gauge based on if I can see the follower, the magazine follower or not in these holes by how many rounds I got. Uh, I won't get into that. It's a bit, it's a little bit off, but all these are nice and even in the center, except for the second one. I have a little bit back. That's my own fault because my uh, hand was a little bit off when I punched it and it ended up drilling a little bit further back than being perfectly even, but not really too noticeable. So next I should get around to painting it. So getting started with the painting, I was going to disassemble the magazine again before I painted it, but with how much trouble I had reassembling it, I'm not going to want to go through that again. So I'm just going to leave it fully assembled. It shouldn't be a problem. It'd be really hard for me to actually get paint into the holes and get into the magazine because uh, I'm not going to be painting that close to the holes. So uh, getting started, I'm just going to be actually painting on to here. Uh, on the actual Type 89 magazines that I've seen, they actually have the numbers stamped in and then painted over 
with white paint as well. I don't have access to those types of tools, so in my case I will just be painting them on with white paint. Uh, and even if I did have access to those sorts of tools, I probably wouldn't even be able to use them because this is already shaped into a magazine. It's not an actual just aluminum flat uh, sheet piece, piece of sheet metal. So anyway, let's get started here. I have a stencil. I don't know who made this. I bought this on Amazon several years ago. It's made for actually as a pen stencil, but it'll work for this. So let's get started. I'm going to start with the five round mark up here and I'll have to wait for it to dry and then we'll go down to the 10, 15, 20, and 25. So this will take quite a while. I'll speed it up. Otherwise we would be here for hours and no one would want to see that. You'd be literally watching paint dry. So that did not turn out whatsoever. So I'm going to go wash this off. All right. Well, painting it didn't actually work out super well. If you saw the paint was a little bit too thick, I'm not going to bother trying to thin it or whatever, getting the perfect paint thinner ratio. Um, so the paint didn't really work out. That's all right. Um, I'm considering maybe using like a marker if I can find a nice, really, really thin paint marker. Um, I might use that on here. It's not the end of the world. I might just leave it like it is here. Uh, all in all, it went pretty well. The only part that was actually a real problem was the paint. Um, the reassembly, I didn't mention this earlier, but that was even more of a nightmare than the disassembly. I had so much uh, trouble getting the follower back in, but I did in the end. It was insanely difficult, and I never want to do that again. But, you know, speaking of which, if I do decide to, if I do decide I want to drill these holes into one of my other Stanag magazines, um, one thing I was thinking is like, the follower uh, doesn't really need to come out all the way. What I could have done is taken the follower and uh, just taken the floor plate off and just pushed the follower down to the bottom so that, you know, the spring would stick out the bottom. And, um then this would have cleared up all of here. I could have just pushed in that block of wood like you saw in the drilling uh, to just hold its rigidity up and just drilled into it uh, using that. And then it would have been a lot easier to reassemble. But at any rate, it is done. It is reassembled. Everything works. So thanks for watching. I will see you all in the next one.